For some of you, the title of this morning's sermon is familiar. It is not original with me. It is the title of one of the many books of essays by the late Louis Grizzard. Grizzard became the youngest sports editor at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution following his graduation from the University of Georgia, assuming that position at the age of 23. He went on to be the sports editor for the Chicago Sun-Times. He then began writing humorous essays on life in the South and had a recurring role on designing women as the brother of the Sugar Baker sisters, and then went on to enjoy a career as a stand-up comic. His collection, collections of essays have the best titles ever. My daddy was a pistol, and I'm a son of a gun. Chili dogs always bark at night. Elvis is dead, and I don't feel so good myself. Shoot low, boys, they're riding Shetland ponies. And my personal favorite, don't bend over in the garden, Granny, because you know them taters got eyes. See, that one takes a minute. These are hysterically funny essays with a poignant moment thrown in every now and then. Though Grizzard died many years ago, the essays and his stand-up recordings are as entertaining today as they were back then. Which brings us to this sermon title, which is pure Grizzard. If love were oil, I'd be about a quart low. A cursory reading of the first letter of John makes the case the Christian life is grounded in love. The love of which the letter speaks is not the love Grizzard bemoans. It is not the romantic love that is found in the Greek word eros. That is the love between two who have committed themselves to each other and to no other. Grizzard knew of what he spoke, divorcing three times and marrying four. No, the love that is commanded to us in the first letter of John is the self-sacrificing, self-denying love expressed in the word agape. This is the love that Christians are to have for one another, a love that seeks the best for the other, a love that is altruistic and is willing to put others before self. It is the love Christ had for us, for the author of the letter puts it plainly, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. This self-giving love that Christ showed for us is the love we are to show for one another. And the letter takes it even further. Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. The very human tendency to talk a good game of love will not do, we are told. It's not enough to speak of love or advocate for love. There are times when love must be expressed in truth and action, and we're back to that scene from My Fair Lady. Eliza Doolittle is being courted by Freddie Einsford Hill. Freddie sings, speak in the world's full of singing, and I'm winging higher than the birds. Touch in my heart begins to crumble, the heavens tumble, darling, and I'm, and Eliza erupts him and slams him. Words, 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 I'm so sick of words. I get words all day through, first from him, now from you. Is that all you blighters can do? Don't talk of love burning above. If you're in love, show me. The love to which we Christians are called is not a love that can or should always be spoken. This love is a love which must be expressed in truth and in action. And lest we think that we Christians have a corner on the market of love, please remember that the commandment to love your neighbor as yourself did not originate with Jesus. 
Go back to Leviticus 19.18 and you'll find it as part of the law of Israel. Read all 613 commandments of the Torah and the commandment to love appears over and over again. Don't fall into the heresy that loving one another is uniquely Christian. It isn't. The greater problem, of course, is that when it comes to loving others, we're not very good at it. The truth is, if love were oil, we'd be about a quart low. We've gotten pretty good at loving those who are close to us. We've even gotten pretty good at loving those within our church. And there are times when we've even gotten pretty good at loving those beyond our church who are faced with disasters and calamities. But when it comes to loving those unlike us, those who differ from us, those who we just don't understand or appreciate, our love does not flow quite so freely. We Presbyterians spent four decades nearly 40 years arguing about whether or not gay and lesbian people could be a full part of the church. During those years, some of the most mean-spirited and injurious things were spoken by church people about other church people. There was genuine hatred. But glory to God, those days have ended. And now all God's children are welcomed into the fullness of the church's life and ministry, but there is still work to do and love to share. Fifty years ago, one of the issues facing the nation and the church was the issue of civil rights for all people. In the nation and in the church, some of the most horrific things were said about people who were created in the image of God, but whose skin was black or brown. Horrible actions against African American people were condoned by some in our nation and some in the church. We've come this far by faith, but there's still work to do and love to share. Sixty and seventy years ago, one of the issues challenging the church was the full inclusion of women into leadership roles and offices in the church. The first woman ordained in the Old Northern Church was Margaret Towner, ordained a year before I was born in 1956. The first woman ordained in the Old Southern Church as a pastor was Rachel Henderlight, who was ordained in 1965. Still, women pastors are hardly ever called to positions of pastor head of staff And by and large, women still receive less in compensation than their male counterparts. We have made progress, but there is still much to do and love to share. If love were oil, we'd be about a quart low. We're not running on empty, but we need a little refill of the love commended to us in the first letter of John and commanded by Jesus Christ. (coughs) What of today? Where are the challenges facing us? Where are the opportunities to love in truth and action? In this hurting world, those opportunities are all around us. There are hungry people, hungry children waiting to be fed. There are prisoners who need visits and a measure of hope. There are shut-ins who need the reminder that they are not alone. There are homeless people and people in inadequate housing who need the assurance of a safe roof over their head. There are young people who need the promise of understanding and friendship and acceptance. There are refugees longing for safety and security not present in their homelands. There are people who are being bombed and gassed by their own governmental leaders. There are nations where poverty exists in dimensions that would drive us to our knees. There are places in our world where desperate needs of so many kind are so present that we would weep if we saw them. 
and that is to say nothing on this Earth Day of the ecological damage being done to the planet God entrusted to our care or the endangering of multitudes of species or the irreparable harm inflicted on delicate ecosystems on a daily basis. The opportunities to put love and truth into action are all around us. The openings to put love into action are before us many times every day. If we do not see them, is it because we don't want to see them? Is it because we are afraid of what it will cost us? Is it because we are concerned that we will be forced to do without? It's time for an oil change. Now it's interesting that oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. At the end of our passage for the day, the first letter of John tells us, and this is the commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him and he abides in them and by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit he has given us. It's one of the most mysterious and miraculous things of all. When we practice the love commended and commanded, the spirit fills us up empowering us to meet the opportunities to put love into truth and action. When we give away the love we have received freely and generously, the Spirit refills us and restores us. When we share the love of Jesus Christ, we are reminded of how loved we are. My dear friends, there is no reason, none at all, for us to be about a quart low. Not now, and not forevermore. Amen.